We have a broad range of services. They touch the lives of young families and young children, certainly teenagers and young people, all the way up through young adults, adults, and even older adults. So we have quite a platform of services that, uh, that touch the lives of people at all different stages on the life cycle. Whether it's the staff, the board, or the volunteers, all people who are engaged here at Family and Children's are highly dedicated to, uh, to helping our clients reach their potential and realize life possibilities. Within our prevention area, we have a full range of, of services that work with young families, primarily mothers, but also fathers. And these are programs that really focus on helping these young families really become good parents. For my family especially, it was very important because my wife has an English problem. The baby wasn't performing developmental, you know, cognitively, emotionally, socially at what she's supposed to be doing. So through the Family Children Agency, they made referrals to Bird to Tree. Bird to Tree came to the family and did an assessment. And by doing that, we started giving right away the services that are required for this child. So technically, they was coming to my home to teach baby things. So that was great help, actually. I get so many help. Now my daughter is okay. She's walking, which is, that's amazing, because she wasn't walking until 16 months is when she gave her first step. Children are, are clearly the most vulnerable populations that we work with. Family and Children's has a long history of providing mentoring services here in this area. Um, we have two components to that service. Um, one we call Project Friendship and the other we call Junior Project Friendship. The Junior Project Friendship program are um, older teenagers mentoring younger children. During the beginning of the process, we kind of ask the parents of what their needs are in the program, whether it's more outside exposure, whether it's self-esteem or isolation, anything. And depending on their criteria, that's what our big friends work on. I was unemployed, I had no money. I couldn't give her a party or any type of experience like that. And she's an only child, so it just wasn't good. So her socialization skills weren't so great at all. And I said that when um, I contacted the agency again. And to my surprise, a miracle happened, and we got a big friend immediately. I felt like that I wanted to do the program because when I was a little friend, I had such a great time just having someone else with me, and that it would be a great way to give back and give someone else the same experience. She's in seventh grade, so she's kind of at that awkward middle school stage, which I had a huge problem with. So. I kind of felt like I could definitely help her get through that. Well, sometimes we go stepping stones. She was here, parents and I made it. Sometimes we come here and I be here at Uno. 22. 22 times, and how many times have I won? Two. Do you think I'm ever going to beat you at Of Uno? course not. Uno. Oh. <laughs> In your face. Yeah. <laughs> I get so much great feedback from the mom, from Teresa, regarding their match and stuff, um, saying that Kayla's smiling and she's not going to her room all the time. She's doing more things. Even school has even noticed some difference. It turns out to be the best thing ever in many, many ways because Kayla's accepted by a teenager and she just wants to be cool because she's 13. So she has at least a friend and a teenager, which is the best thing that could happen to a 13-year-old, who's just wonderful, wholesome, just an extraordinary girl, who's totally committed to Kayla. She's always there every single week. They do great things. She took Kayla to Stepping Stones Museum. That she did the beats. I mean, stuff that I wouldn't, you know, do myself. The great benefit of mentoring is that in so many ways, you're actually working with two clients. You're working with the young person who obviously needs a mentor, but you're also giving a mentor an opportunity to, to be able to give back, which is clearly another service that we're able to provide. Working with her has been really humbling and just made me thankful for who I am and what I've been given in life.
this economy has has created great challenges, and uh, you know where we probably see this the most is in our drop-in center for the homeless. Uh, the old uh, stereotypes of what it means to be homeless are have dramatically shifted in the last few years, as we see. Um, more and more younger uh, homeless individuals, and more and more younger homeless individuals who were actively employed only a year or so ago. Without the support and without the ongoing, you know, linkages to different services and um, opportunities, I don't think that our, our population would really make it. People aren't in homeless shelters. We're able to get them out, get them working, you know, being productive. Money doesn't grow on trees. If you want to work and you want to change your life, you gotta, you gotta go out there and work. Before he could not pay his rent, he really came to us and said, I, I just don't know what to do. I really need some assistance here. So he was able to maintain his rent, but he came to us because he was getting to that point that he didn't know if he was gonna be able to pay his rent next month. Luckily, he lived in our supportive housing, 40 South Main Street, that is able to keep the rent low. Jose was actually working for a painter and he was getting fewer jobs. So we scheduled an appointment, he sat down with me, we talked about what he was looking for, his needs back then, and we start from there. He wanted to work so bad, he wanted to find an income. You know, because bills are coming in, you don't pay your bills, everything's cut off. <laughs> and you'd be out on the streets. Jose actually was able to obtain a job with health insurance. I cannot stress enough the importance of that to him. That was the other thing. You know, if he had to choose between paying his rent or going to the doctor, he didn't have insurance, he was going to have to pay that doctor bill, and then he'd be worried about not paying his rent. So finding a job with benefits has made all the difference to him and really has provided that safety net for him. I go there, the pallets, the truck comes in, I load a truck with one of those forklifts and and put um, do what I got to do. Now that you're in public housing, um, how important was it to get an apartment here? Oh, it was very, very important. Because if I, if I didn't, I'd be out on the streets. Senior Citizens is a very important focus here at uh, Family and Children's. Um, our focus is on, um, you know, um, creating safe uh, services that provide safety to our clients, but also allow um, older adults to live independently for as long as they really choose. Well, I don't know what I'd do without this home. You know, we bought it more than 30 years ago. My wife picked it out. I came out here, took a look at these places, fell in love with it. Two years ago, he had a fall and he was hospitalized for a short period of time and we were able to put a live-in here, otherwise he wasn't going to be able to come home to his, to his home. I'm here 24-7 with him and I make sure he feels all, all right, give him a bed bath, give him, cook for him, uh, uh, dress him up and at times he calls me in the middle of the night in case he needs something, then I have to be there with for him. He's my right hand now. He helps me cook, clean, take care of me, wash me if I need it. It's great to know that everything's taken care of. Every morning I pick it out from, uh, from the doorway, then put it on the table, and when uh, breakfast is ready, I'll just tell him to read his newspaper. After that, I'll sit with him in the kitchen to crack some jokes with him. I worked for New York Life for 44, 45 years. I love meeting people, you know, talking to them, finding out what's happening. It was always a pleasure and still is to come and visit with him. We sit and we chat and we talk about his family and my family. He's very interested in what's going on. And he's, he's a loving, he's a loving man. There will be time I will need help also when I get old. So I think each and every one needs help. If you know that someone's out there to help you, you feel safer. It's wonderful. It's a great feeling to know that you have a man who, who if I need anything, all I have is to drop my hand, drop my foot, anything. I'm one of his son now.
the issues and, and, and challenges that people have really are not um, specific to any particular income level. It really can come at, in, at any socioeconomic level. And that's one of the beauties of an organization like Family and Children's is that we work with all uh, socioeconomic levels. The people are what <laughs> make this job absolutely fantastic and, and they're so grateful. Well, if they don't have these kind of organization, people would be in a lot more, they'd be in a lot worse. I love people. The greatest joy for me is meeting people. Like you guys coming here today, it's, it's a treat for me. American dream actually is true. I believe, I still believe that. Is uh, it's still a good country? It's a, but it's hard. Some you, you gotta work hard. It's not like a what we see in the Hollywood movie. Not that. <laughs> Come to USA and be rich. That's not true. But you gotta work hard here. I'm just willing to whatever it takes because I'm not gonna sit at home and cry. There's work out there, but you gotta go look for it. Thank you so much. Okay. What makes you feel that emotional? Um, being so blessed. I know people say that it's Thank like you. a cliche, but truly. Right, right. Especially being so fortunate because it is my tour. Yeah.